So per particle prior removal, the puppy algorithm try to reject some of the particle which is not coming from the, the main the, the, the interaction of your concern, it's the way it's other so for dirty stuff. Then based on this uh, clean uh, uh, candidate, we do jet clustering, and then uh, based on jet clustering, we still need to do a lot of so called jet and math cor uh, corrections or all these things. And then we start to do apply all these uh, different taking algorithms. For example, we can uh, then do so called uh, WZ top Higgs ID or uh, pi of J ID or like part one separation. And the basis that uh, based on that, we can do a data monitoring compression to do a scaling factor interaction between the, try to try to track monitor to be as as good as as a similar given similar performance as what we find in data, and then finally become feature analysis. This is a one of a very nice uh, plot showing uh, this is actually top mass. Out of the street, uh, attack the top mass. So actually, it's coming from one jet. But when we uh, apply all these kind of chain of cleaning, we can see a very nice top uh, uh, mass distribution out of a single jet. Okay, so this is basically the key idea. So then uh, I'm going to, to, to summarize uh, how we actually take individual objects in the following talk. So uh, it will become a little bit more technical, which is OK. Uh, the first thing is about how do we see W and Z. So WRZ uh, WRZ are something like a 90, 80, 85, or 90 GeV object. So in general, uh, when the momentum of the WRZ uh, going above like a 200 or even 400 GeV, they become more or less merged. That means these two jets become non-separable anyway. They are overlapping with each other. So this is a typical starting point of these kind of algorithms that have to work on. So in old days, people are using so called print jets plus so called n sub gen is tau two one. But I'm, not go I'm going to show you the distribution, but not going to the detail. And uh, nowadays, uh, we are using something like so called puppy, but so called dry mass, or so called so -called, still using so called n sub gen is uh, Tager, but with some kind of a cor uh, correction. I'm going to show you what the correction means. So, anyway, so just first, I want to show you the mass. So, there are two different masks I'm usually using. Uh, again, that's Detail. There are some details, but probably difficult to read. But just to show, there are different ways of measuring mass. So, well, so called grooming mass, groomed mass. So, why so called print jet mass? So, you can see a very nice bump here. This is basically going to a, a WZ particle. And uh, this is also thing, similar things, but this is using a different algorithm. Uh, they have a different or similar performance depends on their range. But uh, this one is more preferred because they have a better property in other angle. So, uh, so the key key, point, key variable is actually not, not the mass, but this 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 is what we call n subjectness. That's a kind of fancy name, right? If the idea is to actually count there are how many constitution or how many cluster within a big cluster. Just like a, in a big cone, you have a things that actually are cluster uh, getting nearby or become some so-called subject thing. So there's a way to count how many subjects within a jet. So, uh, so the way to define a tau n variable depends on the angle, relative angle between any two particles within a cone. So the idea is try to, uh, to, to compare the probability of three objects toward one object or two, two subjects, like this. So, so what we usually call like a tau to one means to compare the probability to be two subjects to one subject. So let's, you can imagine that the, the, they will look different, right? If this, the, if this gem is formed by a uh, W boson, they will basically have two subjects within a cone. And if they are coming like from a single gluon or single jet quark, they will become only one subject. So, so they will have a different prob probability distribution. So this is one typical way. So it's what we call tau to one. And basically, this is a distribution. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, sorry about that, but anyway, you see that this different. Okay. Yeah, somehow it's very bright. So one thing we I just mentioned earlier, there's the same kind of so-called DDT correction. It's very difficult to understand, but the idea is like this. In fact, when people try to start in this uh, so-called tau two one variable, they, become, they, they just realize actually they have some strong correlation with the background, not to the signal, but to the background. So like uh, you have a random, random jet, naturally will generate some kind of correlation in, the, in terms of mass and this kind of variable. So, so this, this kind of correction was a way to try to remove or, or try to mitigate the correlation between the mass and the, uh, this kind of taking variable. So after doing that, the, the background will become more stable when you actually apply a stronger requirement on this uh, 
uh, set subject in variable and it become easier to model. So this is also one way people try to improve the study by not just looking at signal, but looking at the background. Try to reduce the correlation and see how if we can do it better. So this is a typical, I'm, I'm just going to show you one example that using this kind of behavior in, the, in real physics analysis. So this is a one of typical search, looking for a very heavy particle decay to a Z plus a factor boson. This is a Z decay to two lepton, and this factor boson can be WZ Higgs. They all, de they, they all decay to two quark. In this analysis, actually, they don't include Higgs because Higgs is a different property. I'm going to talk about it later, but here it's only include W and Z. So by looking at this, this is soft drop mass, and uh, also this unsubgenerous variables, actually they can form a very nice mass, infrared mass of this X particle, which is not, which is not known, can be uh, anything, heavy resonance or what, uh, whatever particle. So anyway, so they should, in this study, people have to assume some kind of model. So for example, here is uh, assuming, I think, let me, let me zoom a little bit, it's very difficult to see here. Uh, there's, some, there's two different models that have been assumed. So maybe this, I think this one of these is a W prime. I don't know why it's a, uh, I have to do with DYC, sorry. Anyway, so one W prime and something. In fact, as you can see, there's very small uh, assets here, but this is only like a 2.5 sigma local, so it's very hard to say, but anyway. So, so that's what people see, again, they, they exclude the, the uh, a big range of uh, phase space in terms of this new particle. So, so just as I mentioned, uh, this one does not include heat. So why heat is not included? So let me talk about the boost heat. So, well, just as heat can, can be also high momentum. Also, the most of the particle we see by now, since uh, 2012, about, about when, we, when we discuss the heat boson, they are relatively slow. But you can imagine if there are some new particle or new phase, uh, new phase things actually can generate the boost heat, they become uh, a very inter interesting object. And the, well, it's a bit difficult to see again, sorry, but the, the, the typical, the, the, the most di different things that Higgs have a, like a, almost 60% when you get to do big quark. So that means that in, in the, when we look at the WZ take, people do not need to require a, a, a B, B, B take information within the cone. But for Higgs, uh, since it mostly goes to like a big quark, so they have a, a, a good way is not just looking at this kind of shape variable like a jet mass or n subject list, it's kind of how many subjects can also look for B tagging. The, the, the key issue is that the actual B quark fly a little bit longer than the other particles, so we will generate secondary vertexes. So we can we see secondary vertex within the cone. So that's the way. So usually we have a typical way to take there's a single B jet or not, but since these two B jets actually merge together. So people actually define a new way to take these things. So there are several ways. Well, first thing is that it's uh, basically the same as the old one. We still need to measure the mass well. So, so this is uh, uh, try to look for this current jet, of current mass or soft drop mass. Still the key variable because we can see uh, they have us form a very nice Higgs bomb at the right mass. Second thing is that we can still look for this so n subject this, like the tau 2 one thing, try to compare one subject to two subject. So this is a typical one. Now, but the key, key point is this uh, bit tagging. So there are several ways. For example, this jet is a little bit better than usual jet. So one way is wrongly our ordinary uh, bit tagging through a whole big fat jet. It's so-called fat jet tagging. So it sounds a little bit fatty, but uh, that's right. Or one way is that since there are two subjects, right, like a big jet, you have two subjects. So one way is like we can take out the subject and then use, a, use an ordinary uh, B take algorithm to run this subject. We take if there's a one B take B jet or two B jets within the B core, or there's a special way, special algorithm to really take uh, two B quarks within a cone. It's called double B table. So nevertheless, let just let me show you the performance. There's a there are technical details, but the uh, there are different different tiger. Uh, for in general, nowadays we have been already proved the uh, double B tiger is actually performing the best in most of the regions, so, so that's a, well, it's a hard to see, but there's some performance comparison between different algorithms, but, and the, in the end, we show uh, uh, double P tagging is probably the best one. Uh, maybe you want to see my slides afterwards. <laughs> I guess it's pretty hard to see, even I cannot read it, so, yeah. I guess you kind of give you a reference, the reference is here, so. Okay, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I know you need a number to do the music, right? And let me move on. And uh, another important thing is that how do we actually, uh, 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 how do we verify this kind of algorithm within data? It's always a, a difficult part because the, uh, we have not yet observed Higgs to BB yet, right? <laughs> to be honest. We found a lot of Higgs both on decay, but they are not actually decayed to B to B quarks. So, uh, so one way is that we can verify these things either using uh, like a, a di di jet, uh, so like a like a gluon, gluon split into two B quark, or or try to measure the uh, try to try to compare data Monte Carlo using a deep uh, try to compare Monte Carlo with a different different generator and try to see how it works, how how it varies. So basically, this is a, we have a, a way to verify this, and and it's nevertheless so. So basically, in the end, we find that Monte Carlo actually we pretty well, so it really become usable. So just going to show you one typical example of using this kind of algorithm in the real analysis is this one. It's a dead heavy particle, but this time it's not decayed to a phi, it was a phi. It's decayed to two Higgs, and they start, uh, and then they come in become four B quark. So you can see that four B quark in the event, and the, this is heavy. Hey, H particle is very heavy. So that means this heat can be merged to jet, become like two heavy, uh, two boosted heats, and then merge to, to, to each other. So basically, this, uh, this uh, algorithm is using so called, uh, still using this uh, soft drop mass plus n subgenus plus double B tagger. And in the end, it becomes, uh, well, it's hard to see, but this is a distribution of the double B tagger distribution. And uh, we can apply, a bit, based on this information, we have very nice mass distribution and uh, and give a, a limit on terms of a cross-section. Okay. So this is a way to how we use these things. So now we know how to take WZ, the next one must, uh, uh, WZ Higgs, this one is top. Top is more tri tricky. Uh, the issue is simply because top have three subjects other than two. So there are many different algorithms developed so far actually. Uh, you just see, there's a big list of different algorithms since the old days. Uh, so this is actually a summary of uh, all the tagger used in a CMS Roman analysis. So you see, uh, different tagging, different way of using, but it's not so, so not totally converged. But in, but they all have a similar idea by by uh, by looking for three subjects instead of two. So idea is like this. So. Uh, so this is a so-called classical algorithm we used in the, most of the Roman analysis, like uh, the analysis before 2015. So uh, the idea is looking for a jet, a little bit wider jet of cone 0.8. Well, it's not really cone, but it's like a radius parameter of 0.8. The idea is like a first do so-called primary decomposition, try to find two subjects within a, within a cone, and then one subject must be bigger than the other one. And then do so-called secondary uh, decomposition, try to separate the, the bigger cluster into two again, so eventually it becomes three. So this is uh, one way, and uh, uh, the typical idea is try to, to look for a bigger cluster consider, consider like a W boson and then one smaller jet look like a B. So this is a classical algorithm, and uh, the new one or modern one is using this one. It's even harder to understand, but just let me, just, just let me say a few words. Like uh, nowadays, we are using even wider cone, and the, the idea is like uh, try to optimize the, the radius uh, uh, several parameter in a, in, a, in a region. It's not just a fixed number, so they become more powerful than before. And the, and in the end, there are several so called uh, so called variable or several features can be extracted from this kind of algorithm, and they can be used to identify if it's a top or not. Uh, so. So one of the key idea is like this. Either we still, in this analysis, people are still have to still using this so-called current or soft drop mass to like measure the, the jet mass. But there are several algorithms we can still use, like the uh, subject this uh, mentioned earlier. But before was comparing the probability to find two subjects to one subject. Now it's people can do by comparing three subjects to two. So it's tau, tau three two. And another one is called so shower decomposition construction. It's a little difficult to say, but the idea is trying to find very so-called micro jets with a very, very narrow cone with a big cone and try to cluster it and try to calculate the probability. So there are different algorithms. So in the end, well, you know, nowadays, uh, when, when you don't know how to do things, just put them all together, right? Just like doing so-called uh, 
uh, so called neural network or all these kind of uh, fancy algorithms in here and put everything together. So, so this is a, a way to using so this uh, multi, basically uh, we, 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 are, we are using BDT, this is like uh, random forest things, that kind of algorithm, like a ratio, combine all the information together and see what's the best combination. And then you eventually see the performance are almost less the same, but still some combination is better than the others. So for example, this is just like uh, try to zoom in a little bit because uh, if we are very difficult to see which one is better, but if you zoom in, you can find something is slightly better than the others. So in the end, uh, people have decided what's the so-called golden selection or golden variable we want to use. And uh, in the end, now it's typically people use so-called subplot mask plus tau 3 2 plus B tagging. It's called so-called standard CMS top taker version number two. So I don't know, maybe it will be version number three in the, in the near future, but anyway, this is the current standard method. So what we are using this way to take a top block. So uh, before moving to world, uh, I still I want to show one uh, application that use top decay, uh, top taker. Uh, this again, this is a heavy particle, but this kind is a, basically a C prime because there's a neutral uh, decay to kitty bomb. Uh, so here, one top would always go to lepton neutrino and the big clock. The one on one will go to emerge jets. So in this analysis, people use the uh, subplot mask plus n sub gen is tau 3 2 plus uh, b taking. In the end, because you can see a uh, you can see a very nice top mass out of this jet. You see a uh, very nice bump, and they can set the uh, uh, relative strong limit on z prime particle decay to kd bump. Okay. So this is the idea. So I think uh, I still have a little bit of time, so let me come to my last topic today. It's on part gluon separation. Yeah, how do we do this? So uh, I'm not sure everybody knows, but uh, in fact, it's very difficult to separate Puck and Gluon. They all look the same. They all interact with QTD, right? So, so it's def definitely hard to see using the, uh, within the collider. But there's still some way to do it. Depends on their property. The basic idea, they are something like this. First, uh, usually Gluon have uh, more particles, generate more particles so-called higher particle multiplicity within the code. So gluon has more particles. And the second thing, gluon and quark have a different fragmentation function. So uh, they will generate different shape. For example, usually quark will be stronger and the radius of the gluon, so it will become a little bit more, uh, uh, will be more collimated. It's uh, 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 some so-called main thing, and the other will be like a soft radiation. Gluon will be more like a uh, uh, so-called uh, randomly distributed or a wider jet in, that in general. So the idea is try to try to find some features out of this kind of a, this physics argument and then combine them together and try to measure. So currently the current uh, standard method was based on three different algorithms, uh, different features. One is what we just call multiplicity by counting how many particles we find in, within a curve and. Uh, well, it's, again, it's very hard to see. Sorry, it's quite too, too bright. And anyway, gluon and the quarks have different counts of particles. And the second thing that is, uh, we can also the jet come up with like a cone, but we should we can actually try to calculate the shape of this cone. It can be more or less like an ellipse. And you can one can actually calculate the minor axis distance, like uh, compared to the larger one, and the, and the plot it. And uh, given the uh, Given the correlated uh, quarks or gluons, they have a different property, so that this this variable will be somewhat different. Also, that's also a way to calculate take take uh, like a PT sum square, and uh, it depends on fragmentation. So there's three different variables, and uh, nowadays we just combine all these three become a so-called quark gluon likelihood. Uh, so it's a, again very hard to see, but gluon look at this, quark look at the other way. So basically, you can take a cut, say, okay, I want high purity quark, I want high purity gluon. So this is a blocker. So you see, okay, they have some separation power, depends on the energy or make PT or particle. Uh, in the very forward region, we still have some separation power, but you see the separation power become weaker. But unfortunately, we want better separation in the forward jet. Uh, some of people here may know the reason is we want to take uh, like a PBF decay of uh, uh, production heaps, right? So we want to know. Uh, the flavor of a forward gen. So it's still room to improve. Another big thing is that the, how do we verify this algorithm is a critical critical issue because it, 
in a hadron collider, it's not so e easy to, to identify. This is, a, uh, this is actually a quark or gluon at the source. So the idea is basically like this. Uh, so we have so two different control regions. One is dependent by selecting two jets, like that, so called jet events. So since there are two high-PT jets, they are mostly look like uh, a QTT event, so they should have uh, contain more gluons. And uh, one another way is to look for Z-plus jet events. Since it is a Z is an electroweak object, so they should have more quark. Well, just relatively. So basically, we can control, uh, compare this digest control region or Z plus jet control region. They have a different composition of quark and gluon. So we can compare data and only power, and uh, you can see they all looks pretty good agreement with each other somehow. Yeah. So this is a, a kind of a, a demonstration that uh, we do understand all these variables so far. And we can also using this data set to measure the performance and give uh, like uh, how good we can do. Okay. So you are familiar yeah. with the uh, Yeah, just monitor data and on um, this uh, key variables, the separation of uh, so-called quark one likelihood. And uh, basically these two different set selection will have a different composition of quark and gluon. So if they all agree, then we should see a uh, ship, uh, the ship within data monitor should agree. So you can see the ratio, well, so it's hard to see, but it's more or less flat. Uh, how much you can trust the Monte Carlo? Uh, uh, that's, uh, I think that's a difficult question to be honest. So, so basically what we do here is by trying to compare different uh, model, different Monte Carlo generator, and take the maximum variation we can find. So, so a little bit tricky, but nevertheless, the, the best we can do. Yeah. So uh, at least the, uh, you can land some of the uh, generators. Yeah, uh, it's like uh, yeah, PCR, Irving, all these things. At least we need to compare all the standard different uh, generators. They have a different fragment uh, treatment, right? Yes. So we can compare, try to generate and compare it with data, and uh, try to guess the composition of these two different, so we'll take the events and try to compare. A little bit tricky, but doable. Yeah. All right. So application, again. So as I mentioned, we want to see uh, uh, the Higgs production through uh, factor boson fusion. And uh, in this kind of uh, uh, physics process, we expect to see two forward quark jets, not gluon quark jets. Uh, unfortunately, this, this, this quark gluon separation power is still not very good, especially for forward jets. So it's not totally used. But people apply some kind of check with uh, our data. So uh, so this is just like showing the uh, sum of variable. For example, there's a minor x distribution at 13 TeV data uh, for a so-called VBF light event. So this is also for 8 TeV, but this is a quark one likelihood distribution. So this is basically idea, basically taking these two forward jets. So it's not yet become a full analysis, part of full analysis, but can be some potential in the near future. So anyway, so uh, I think I'm going to summarize my talk quickly. So anyway, so there are more and more search that start to use this kind of boosted mating, especially in the so-called so uh, heavy quark search or heavy resonances search. And maybe we'll see more application for quark gluon separation in the future. So let me, let me just comment, uh, comment a little bit toward the future. So how do we still improve this algorithm toward uh, next generation of analysis? So uh, so far, most analysis depends on boom jet, means like a pruned jet mass, or subject mass, but and subject is variable. Basically now it's a baseline for all doing this kind of analysis. And what can be still done? For example, people can mix different uh, subject is ratios. For example, Google will only take the, like a tau two one, tau three two, but actually can actually compare different variable and give a better estimation. Or people can do a non-uniform radius. Currently all the jet is you can draw within a fixed cone. But you can think in the cone size can be changed depends on the, uh, the idea of the, uh, uh, the uh, taking information. And also, uh, there may be some way, better way to assist a W jet within a jet, a top jet, than the many, many things, or like an even higher or better uh, multiferral analysis or even different learning thing can be still used. So that's still thing. And another point that uh, just not just not just markup means uh, performance against background re rejection. The cinematic uncertainty usually improves the study a lot as well. Just like we try to remove the background correlation with the so-called DDT uh, DDT tagger. This kind of thing also helps a lot. 
And also another thing is that the new development with detectors are essential. For example, as you know, we are going to work on this uh, phase two upgrade, so called HG Cloud project. This is a new high priority decommitted at the NCAP. And the, this, before we have only like, a, uh, we have a crystal and a pre-shower, only the base is like three layers. Now we become multi-layers, and the many layers can have a very fine silicon readout. So it become very, uh, very good in terms of this kind of study because we want to know which particle is which particle, right? So just show you one uh, simulation. You see it's very, uh, well, it's very hard to see, but anyway, you see a very fancy picture. Actually, it's out of a detector simulation for HG Cal. Uh, the, there's a, basically, there's a jet here. But if you do, you see a lot of particle fly here, here and there. So if we can spend a lot of time, or more time, or more efforts to how to reconstruct particle using HG Cal, using those uh, detailed Im Im uh, images, like before, we can get better uh, substructure studies, right? So still room to improve. Mm -hmm. OK, let me summarize my talk. I don't want to go through the point again, but just say, OK, there are, this is a, just substructure is, a, is a, a new way to take the particles. And it's already used for many searches. And there are still rooms for improvement in the near future. So thank you very much. <laughs> OK, any questions? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, why, why do we use the uh, uh, jet substructure in BBF Higgs production? Oh, and it's not really, oh, you mean uh, for Higgs itself or for the forward part uh, for jet taking? Uh, uh, so uh, in, in that page, you, you're not talking, talking about the... It's not for Higgs, it's used for uh, forward jet plus ground separation. I see. Yeah, it's about the, uh, the forward jet, right? So. Okay. And a second question is, uh, uh, how, how do we um, sep uh, identify double jet and, uh, I mean, separate the double jet and the V? v jet? In fact, it's very difficult. <laughs> there, there's some discussion, how do, how do we do it? But the, so far, the version is not good enough to separate 